seems a little odd to be here after being up and eating all the trees and everything, so I have to readjust a little bit. Uh, for some of you who have been here, uh, this the how shall I like in the kingdom of heaven? Uh, boy, you can really learn a lot if you'd like. How shall I like in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus, uh, when you look at this clearly like we have over the last 13 Sundays, you begin to see the Gospels aren't just a bunch of parables, not just a bunch of stories. It's Jesus actually walking you through the temple, walking you through heaven. It's your parables in your mind to make you think. Okay? Uh, that's what the, the problem is, is we don't want to think. We want to become religious. Now notice something, for those of you I've been telling you, if you want to understand where I'm coming from, you have to read the seals. Okay? John was opening up the seals. Very important. Because in order for John to open up the seals and begin, he had to hear, he had to hear, he had to see, he had to behold. And there was. And there was a, a preparation of drawing near to God. Okay? So, as we go through here, you listen, I heard was a man of grain and leaven. Remember, I'll show like the kingdom of heaven. I heard. A man of grain and leaven. Okay? Now, a treasure of pearl net I saw. Okay? It becomes observant. I don't, I, I don't quite understand it, but I'm seeing it. Then, a king, a householder, and a certain king. I behold it. Here's the effects. Here's the, the way the kingdom of heaven is going to be working. Okay? I beheld. Now, there was, remember we're getting closer to ten virgins. Remember the man uh, uh, traveling and then uh, all nations. Okay? Uh, were gathered together. So, there was. Okay? So, you see the process. I heard, I saw, I beheld. There was. So, Jesus has taken you through the kingdoms. So you have to always remember the temple. You start now as a man that plants a seed. It's simple. Okay? And then he brings you along, and then you find a treasure. And then he brings you along, and then you find, you see, it's a king, a householder. You begin to see how the king of heaven works. It's like a servant. Some work an hour, some work eleven. Okay? And he's showing you. Now he's bringing it to the moment of his decision. Okay? Closer when he's going to return as king of kings. How the ten virgins, who so brings in the Holy Ghost, and how that signifies five were wise and five were foolish. Okay? And as we talk about the, the man traveling, Jesus leaves, okay? And then he comes back. He's going to be coming back and he's going to see, what have you done now? All right, in your servitude. Now you're going to see he's going to gather all nations. Now it's time for that. And here we find ourselves where? Right at Matthew 25, 31 to 46. This is how he ends it. How shall I like in the kingdom of heaven? Here it is. But before we proceed, we're going to go to Isaiah. So jump back to Isaiah 58. Okay, you need to see some of these verses here. Isaiah 58. Now, I use part of these verses often. I use them in Harrisburg. I think they're very important to understand uh, for not only uh, the church, the bride, the people with God's children, but for leadership. And uh, they can never get away from it. But listen carefully, Isaiah 58, 1 to 14. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily. Alright, so here's sinners, but they seek me daily. Alright, and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice that they delight in approaching to God. See, drawing near, they want to approach. Remember, we're just going over that. How shall I like the kingdom of heaven? This is a nation. They want it, they talk like it, they act it, but they aren't doing it. So he says, show them, my, show them their sins. See, that's what the, the messenger is to do. That's what Jesus did. He come in, what did he do? He showed them their sin. He showed them where they're wrong and they hated them. No different than today. Compromised Christianity must end. We aren't to compromise. Religious Christianity, religiosity must end. It's a time to see the sin. Look what you have done as a nation. They take delight in approaching to God. We've got people that are repeatedly going in and out of the Capitol, in and out of the White House, going all over, praying and praying and praying, seeking God, but they're getting in. No, God said, you're not seeing your sin. You're not seeing what you have done. How shall I like in the kingdom of heaven? Well, here we are. 
Now we're getting right up. You've been along here for 13 Sundays now. We're getting right up to that moment of what's going to happen. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, find ye pleasure, and exact all ye labors? We, we fasted, you know, Lord, Lord, we professed your name, we've done all these things, and God's saying, yeah, but wait a minute. You don't see your sin. You don't see what you have done. You aren't looking at the carnage that you left behind. You aren't able to be that man that goes back to the beginning. Now you're going to see something. We have to understand what the first, the first, the last, the last, the first, and how there, you have to go back to the beginning. But really, the beginning, there isn't a beginning because there's no end. And if there's no end, then there can be no beginning. So really, there isn't an end. And there's a beginning. But really, there isn't a beginning because there's no end. So. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that's the way that works. Man. Behold, he fasts for strife and debate. Isn't that what we do? Don't you find yourself more debating your religion than anything else? Sure you do. And to smite with the fist of wickedness. There's that word wicked. Never forget. Remember, we're coming along. How shall I be king of heaven? Wickedness. Wicked is hell, people. All right? That's the wicked will become hell. Don't worry about the place, hell itself. Worry about being damned as wicked. That, that's what's important. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. See, you go and you do things because you want to be heard by God. You go and think that you're doing stuff so God will hear you. Now, is it such a fast that I have chosen? See, God's saying, now look, there's some different ways to fast. There's some different things to do that's going to be pleasing to me. But, what is the one that I have chosen? That's what's important. See, we don't want the one that God has chosen. We want the one that's going to be more pleasing and path of least resistance for us. Right? That's it. It's our nature. A day for a man to afflict his soul, is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and acceptable day to the Lord? So you can go and get all religious, you can go down in the ashes, and you can, you know, wail and, and cry out. God says, you think that that's what I really want? If that's what he really wanted, he never would have sent his son to die on that cross. He said, look, is, is, you think that's going to be the acceptable day of the Lord to me for that? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Now, wait a minute. The one that God has chosen, it doesn't mean there's other things in place. It doesn't mean that you don't fast anymore if that's what you believe you want to do. You do it. It doesn't mean you don't pray a certain way. If that's the way you want to pray, then you pray. It doesn't mean you want to go to a certain, you don't go to a certain church. If that's what you want to do, then you go there, as long as it's a good Bible teaching church. But it means that as a church body, a true church body, we better know what fast God is looking at. We better know that the one that He has chosen to be above all the gospel. Now watch. It is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness. That's what I have chosen, that you remove the hell from the world that you are oppressing my children with. To undo the heavy burdens. Oh, yeah? You know, some of us were... Uh, uh, the world, the, the, the so-called outcasts or the oppressed, you've been trained to be this way? Oh, sure. The way you were brought up, maybe. You had controlling uh, parents or you had, you know, uh, issues in your life. You were trained to be this way. Now, all of a sudden, they don't like you. You know, like I said, now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm against abortion now. Life is 
life, and that's the way it should be. But like I talked about down at the Capitol, you know, you, you come out uh, against abortion, and you say, no, you got, the child got to be born. They deserve life. And then all of a sudden, when they're an adult, you don't like them anymore, you want to kill them, get rid of them. <laughs> What's the difference? You know, if you're going to go out there and say you're against abortion, then that means you are saying whatever life that is, I'm going to accept and I'm going to be there for. Amen. You understand? That's what it's about. You just don't go out there like, that's what people do, so they look powerful. I'm going to go out there and march around and I'm, I'm against, I'm against abortion, I'm against abortion. And then you turn around and you get on your phone or you get around the table and you start gnashing your teeth about offenders or somebody else's sin, how they're no good and they shouldn't be around. Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense to me. Bring it. You know, now if you're for that abortion stuff, then you can go join up with Hitler. And you can start your techno sapiens or, you know, your bloodline of these perfect people if that's what you want to do. But don't call yourself a Christian and say you're against abortion and turn around and say, well, once a person's an adult and they failed at something or made some mistakes, now, now I hate them and I want rid of them because we know the Bible says if you hate, you've murdered them. So, what's the difference? So God is saying here, is not this that you would, uh, in verse 6, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free. And that ye break every yoke. There's there's something that would usher in the coming of the Lord. A nationwide year of Jubilee. And embrace everybody's death. And we all start all over. But that can only happen with the true Christian. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Listen, this is the Old Testament Isaiah. God saying, this is what I want done. Amen. This is the fast that I want. That's not physical works. This is, this is the spiritual gospel anointing of the life of my son. Amen. Before we can even get any further here. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. The poor that are cast out to thy house. How can any man or woman, any man or woman, live in the day that calls themselves a Christian, say that God's priority in the gospel was not to have the doors open always to the poor of the land, regardless of who they are. Here it is. You'll never get by this verse. You can try it all you want. You can read it all. You know what? Then you can make it up. You know a good way out of this one? Well, that's the spiritual poor. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you're so intelligent. Would you like to explain that to me? What's spiritual poor in your little vocabulary? And that are cast out of thy house. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy house. You know what that means? That are wondering. How many of you were wondering? Literally. How many of you were wondering where you were going to go? That thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. That's the good one. That's the one I like. I like that right there, you know it? And that thou hide that. Here it says, where am I? When thou seest the naked, that thou coverest him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. You know, that's a good one there, because, you know, the naked out there, the destitute, those who are in need, to cover them. But, but don't hide yourself from your own blood. You know, your own children, you're casting out, and you don't want See, don't you remember, a while ago, the sermons, do you remember, our bloodlines go throughout the nation. You have family members all over the place. Where are they? 
don't you realize you're going to be you're going to be a, a, a combo to that? Don't ever turn on your own flesh. Mm. Now you can read it. I can't. I, I, I'm just telling you what it says. You can read it all you want. Now it sounds like this Matthew 25, 31 to 46 was put in a long time ago. And we turned it into a bunch of religion. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Uh-oh, here's the watches. Those of you who are coming around now, come on. In the Bible studies, bear with me. They all the little light should have sparked there. That, yeah, morning. There's something more there. See, now you can go with it. Go to the wall. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Boy, people, you're ready to enter into the kingdom of God, aren't you? You see, the, see how it moves along now. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and the speaking vanity. You know, pointing the finger? Sure. A lot in there, isn't there? And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, now he repeated it again. Thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like the spring of water. Those waters fail not. How shall I liken the kingdom of heaven? It's like a man. It's a man of the sea. And he watered it. Isn't that cool? See how he went right back, didn't he? Went right back to the beginning. Because the first, the last, last, and the first, he goes back to the beginning because there's really no end. See? Because <laughs> there can't be an end when there's not a beginning because it's all the same. And the same shall be saved. See, that's the process we forget. We've been taught to be all religious. We've been trained to be that way. Instead of how to walk through the kingdom of God. How to know where we're at. How to get back to that planning. And continue it. And what you're actually doing is you keep pushing your treasure closer and closer to this moment of the great white throne judgment. As you grow spiritually. Because it is a tonic for the soul. And like a spring, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not, will never fail you if you keep your future with him. Never. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. I love this. There's a lot of old waste places out there, isn't there? There's a lot of abandoned churches, isn't there? Yes. Oh yeah, the old waste waste places. Places out there that people worship and let it fall, right? Shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations. Many generations were through that church. Yeah, you'll go out there and you'll begin to open those doors, and it'll become a refuge and a sanctuary for all people. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. By the way, that's what I've been called. To. People, it's simply this. All I'm doing is I'm out there trying to make a path for those who want to follow it so you have a future. You understand that? I'm out there trying to cut through the clutter. I'm out there trying to keep the focus on what should be done so you have an opportunity to get out there and do what you need to do. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, remember, remember, what do you do between Sabbaths? And call the Sabbath 
of the light, the holy of the Lord, honorable and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways. Remember the way? The way of the Lord. Not doing your ways. Not finding thy own pleasure, and, nor speaking thy own words. Your own ideas, your own philosophies, your own theologies, your own input. Then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob the father, thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And now he just took us all the way back again to the beginning there further. And I'm not going to go there right now. Okay? That would, that would be considered the apostles' thought. Do you realize that the church is spending more time in trying to support their religious beliefs and doctrines than in trying to go out and fulfill God's plan to the world? Do you realize that? More time in debating their religious theologies and doctrines, in seeking all of it in vain, and coming up with self-righteousness. Sure, that's what they're doing. They aren't putting the time into the people that need it the most. How shall I liken the kingdom of heaven? You know, is drawing near to God for you a matter of having your questions I answered in the Bible when, you, when you're when you looking for them. You think that that's drawing near to God? Or is drawing near to God for you understanding understanding what Rima means? The Rima word. Now remember for you in the Bible study, there's the Rima Lego logos. The Rima word, individual, and then Legos to understand it, and then Logos to, to hear the mind of God and to live the life of Christ. So are you reading the Bible just to get your answers? To questions and that's it? And then once you get them, you start your own theology and idea of what it should be? Or are you reading the Bible to truly experience the chosen fast of the Almighty God? But God forbid that you're reading that Bible to try to prove His messengers wrong by your own theology, especially messengers that are truly living out the gospel. You better be very careful in that area. That's why some of the some of the churches don't want you to have the Bible in your hand. You can do more damage to yourself than good, so be careful. It's a blessing that you have that Bible in your hands right now. It's a real blessing, but it could be the worst thing ever to you if you misuse it. That's a warning, by the way, when you're holding in your hands. It's not for your self-pleasure and your self-desires. It's not for you to use as a weapon to, to run somebody down or try to prove somebody wrong based on your views. You better be careful in that area. That Bible's in your hands so that you can follow along with the message that God has given you. You can follow along in understanding the wisdom and knowledge of the Lord. And it is there for you to caution against false teachers. Obviously false teachers. And I'm not going to go there now either because I don't have time. You know, a lot of people use salvation as a controlling weapon. You know, condemn people, hurting people, telling you if you sin, this sin, you're going to go to hell, and, you know, scaring you into it instead of showing you the truth. There's only one sin that's going to put an end up in hell, and that is denying God, denying Jesus Christ as God blasphemy against the Holy Ghost not believing in God. Remember, that falls along in the I can't area. The whole, there is no I can't in God. With God, all things are possible. See, in Isaiah, that, that verse 58 and 13 and 14, he tells you clearly what to do. Bring honor on the Sabbath. Bring my son to church in your heart and your mind. Don't bring Satan in here. Look at Exodus 3. Let's jump back to Exodus 3. And what I don't, these verses I don't get to, I'll read them all here today. Exodus 3, 1 to 16. I don't need to read all these. I'll point out a couple of things for you. Exodus 3, verse 1 to 16. all 
these later. Exodus 3, 2016. All right, this is the burning bush. Now, I, I preached the Bible on this burning bush at times. Uh, now, if you read uh, 1 to 16, Moses, he, he's there, he sees the burning bush, okay? And God is, uh, uh, and he said, uh, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet. You're standing on holy ground, okay? Don't bring your dirty dust here in my area, okay? For the place where thou standest is holy ground. Okay, he's telling, uh, now, notice in verse 7 here, he says, And I have surely seen the affliction of my people. There's where God's concern is. Now notice, when you go through the Bible, people, yes, we got to worship God, always. But God's fasting, what's important to Him, is the affliction of His people. You see? So, you can go worship God all you want. If you aren't going out there and helping those who are impressed, forget it. It's useless. Because what is the fast God wants? He said, you better be taking care of my people, or your worship is meaningless. It's, it's right here. Why did God pick Moses to go to Pharaoh and then lace Pharaoh with plagues? Why? Was it because Pharaoh wasn't worshiping him? Was it because Pharaoh wouldn't let him be his God? No, it was because my people are being afflicted. My people will be free. What do you think God's looking down and seeing right now? He's seeing a lot of oppressing people out there. Being oppressed. Depressed. Being oppressed into depression. They're seeing a nation that brought drugs and alcohol in here that's destroying lives and people and gambling casinos. All that stuff that destroys families and lives and he's seeing that. And one day, we don't know when that day is coming, there's going to be a burning bush. He's going to say, I'm going to free my people again. For the last time. This is, I'll show you like in the kingdom of heaven. So here we are here. And this is, uh, if we jump ahead here a little bit, in the three down, uh, let me see, verse 15. We keep reading down there, verse 15. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now notice something. He's tying everything together. The whole Bible for you. Right now. Watch. Has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. What is his memorial? That I want my people to go free. Because they have been oppressed. That's it. Not because they didn't worship me. Not because of that. Because. My people are being oppressed. Those who are truly crying out to me. Those who are truly seeking me. Because that, see, that's the most important thing to worship. When you're worshiping God, you're doing it because you're going to be bringing in the strangers. You're going to be bringing in the outcasts. You're going to be bringing them in, not rejecting them and pushing them away. That's what we've been doing. It's really sickening to me to see senators and representatives that will actually call themselves Christians. And then they'll say, well, we'll just get that person out of that town. We'll just throw them away. Now, I want you to watch carefully of these senators and leaders that go out and say they support abortion. And then just want you to tell them that. Oh, yeah, you support abortion? Or you, uh, you support, you're against abortion? Okay, if you're against abortion then why would you kill somebody by rejecting them and taking their life away from them, telling them they're no good to live in your area? Amen. Why, don't you, why? Would you please explain that to me? Why don't you just come out and say you support abortion then? Because that's what you're doing. It doesn't matter whether whether you, you kill the human being, whether it's in the womb or whether he's uh, 30 years old or 40 years old. It doesn't matter. Why wait? Well, I, mean, I can go a long ways with that one. You know why? Because it frustrates me. Doesn't it frustrate you? It frustrates me. I'm tired of hypocrites, aren't you? Sure. I don't even know where I'm at. <laughs> oh, the memorial. So this is going to be a memorial. Now wait a minute. Does that memorial ring a bell? Remember me. They see the tie of people. The Bible teaches the Bible. It's not change. 
A memorial to me. What's the memorial based on? You delivered my people from their oppression. You went in there and you're going to do something about it. And what did Jesus do? He came and he was doing something about it. And what did he say to his apostles? Now you go and remember me. Go and do something about it. How shall I like in the kingdom of God? Some of you still don't even know what to do with it. Look at Exodus 32. How oh, shall I like in the kingdom of heaven? It's like the tares and the wheat. Stand with me. Exodus 32, 20. And he took the calf which they had made and burned it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. Why? And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. Sinners, evil. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for the, this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. See, Moses went and left with God and made the calf. Remember, that it sucked up water and burned ashes and destroyed the whole process. So see, even though you're going to be delivered people, even though that uh, someone in this ministry is going to bring you in, you're going to be with the tares and the, the, the wheat. You're going to have people come in here and they want other gods. They want to serve other gods. They want to do it their way. Where did that messenger go? He's not around here. Let's start making up our own little our own little God. We don't have to listen to him. I'll show our like in the kingdom of heaven. That's exactly what happened. You know, you'll sit here and, 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 and everyone pretty much in this place will greet me in my face. Oh yeah, you, we got to do it. we got to support you. And as soon as I'm gone, you're already devising your little mischief, and your little ways to manipulate and twist your own little theologies. Sure you do. You know why? Because helping somebody and pleasing God isn't enough for you. That's not what God wants. He wants me to worship this way. As far as I'm concerned, you can read that again. Is not this the fast that I want? You get out there and start helping the hungry and the poor. And if you don't have a desire in your heart and soul to do that, you better go back to the original sacrifice. See, God brought this people out of hunger and thirst out there in the wilderness. Didn't he? He let them get hungry. Why? He wanted to see if they truly were helping each other. Were they helping each other by creating another God? No, no they weren't. That's what God wanted to see. Will they really care and help each other? Or will they destroy each other? Not only physically, but spiritually. Yes, they did. How many of at the moment do you think that believed and they wouldn't have anything to do with that cow? Could you imagine the debating going on? Imagine what was being said when they're sucking ashes in the, in the water through the straw. Think about it. How shall I like in the king of heaven? You better get down in the ashes. You better get down there like a man planting the sea. You better humble yourself. Oh, you got you gotta love it when it when it's right there. A lot of you just want to get out there. You want to find an Aaron that will listen to you, don't you? Sure you do. You want to get out there and find some some pastor that you can make a puppet. 
some errand that you can go ahead and get your way, you know? This isn't Burger King. <laughs> Christianity, you don't have it your way. You can't have it your way. It's God's way. And he says, this is the way it's going to be. Why do you think you're coming to Burger King every Sunday? <laughs> well, you're going to find there's no Burger King in heaven. Third, verses 34 and 35. Exodus 32, 34 and 35. <clears throat> Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, my angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, now listen, when the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them.
and all your philosophies, and you better start digging into what the true meaning of God's Word is all about. And it's like a man who planted a seed, who found a treasure, who started to realize that he was a servant, and was willing to give his life to be that servant, and started to realize that the Holy Ghost was within him, within him. And he always would get weak, but he needed more oil to get strong. And that one day we're going to stand before this Almighty God. And we're going to wait this very moment. This very moment when he's going to say, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Is this not what I said to do from the beginning? But Lord, we're religious. We listen to all those small antichrists. And he's going to say, and who are you? Hello. <laughs> Open your eyes. And you'll find milk and honey. Is that not the land that God wanted to give to those people? He said, Moses, take them. But wait a minute. Wait a minute now. There's a little more to it. It's not so easy, people. Because some of you may have already forgotten the temple, haven't you? Sure you have. The high priest has to go behind that curtain, right? Now come on, if you're with me here. Take him in, Moses. You're not going. By the way, Moses, let's take a walk. He said, see, Moses, that promised land over there is milk and honey? Take a good look, because you're not going. You disobeyed me. You're dead. That was it. God came back alone. <coughs> How many messengers do you think are going to stand at the great white throne of judgment? And before the very eyes of all the people are going to be cast into a literal hell. See, Moses was under the covenant with God to teach us a lesson. Moses is very well in heaven with the Lord. But now under the new covenant, Jesus, Lord Jesus. For all the small a antichrist false leaders out there, they're misleading and teaching, subliminally impregnating the minds of God's children with religiosity and all this nonsense that is literally a part of letting the world fall into degrading itself. Whack the, the love of many waxing cold because they think they're religious and they're smart. No, starving children in 2012 isn't smart, America. No, filling our, our prisons up or becoming addicted to incarceration and filling and maxing out our prisons in America, no, that isn't smart at all. Making people criminals is not smart, America. There's only one thing that can show any wisdom and intelligence at all in this nation. And that is if people come to a stop and make Jesus Christ, our God and our King, the most important thing. And read these verses and say, now what is it that he wants? He says, is this not the fast I have chosen? That you begin to help the hungry, take in the strangers, and start undoing the mess that you have made. Are you part of that? Hey, you've been delivered out of bondage. You've had a place to come to. Now who are you going to help? That's what it's all about. God gave you this place. This is a refuge and a sanctuary in your time of need. You better be careful what you do with it. You can get, yeah, you can just think you can get by this lifetime scot-free. But I'm going to tell you something. You're going to wake up. You find a great white throne judgment right there. Yeah, that, that's the kingdom of heaven. There's one way out of it so you can enjoy heaven 
you're having right now is just denounce God and go live it, man. And live it up because this will be the only heaven you ever see. But if you truly claim to have Christ as your Lord and Savior, like those of you standing up here did today, then you better start living it. It's not a game. See, that's the thing. We turn Christianity into this little game. This little country club mentality, like it's all okay. It's not okay. It's not okay to walk into churches today with your fancy cars and your diamonds and your jewelry looking all prim and proper when you've got starving children out there. You've got people being cast out and disregarded, thrown away, murdered in the spirit because they aren't wanted. And you think that's acceptable to the Lord? I say not. Amen. Amen. Now, let's go to Matthew 25. We're not done yet. Almost. We're going to listen to Jesus' version of the great fast of the Almighty God. Are you with me out there? Amen. Amen. Okay. Then shall he say also unto them in his left hand, on his left hand, depart from me, ye cursed. Moment of damnation. Into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, 
and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer, saying, Him saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. God wanted to kill his people out. Oh, we're on this, didn't he? Mm -hmm. See, I want to now let them all. Who stepped forward on their behalf? Yes, Moses. He said, God, if you do that, then what would they say? They would say, what well, God would deliver his people out here and destroy them? Moses stepped in. That's what stopped God. Because he had a plan. And as much as you do it to the least of these, my brother, you've done it to me. That, that is why God is patient and he's waiting. The righteous. You know what righteous means? I'm going to read this here before we finish up. You're acquitted. Innocent. It's a standard for all men. It's the character or quality of being right. Whatever is right or just of itself that conforms to the will of God. Whatever is right or just of itself that conforms to the will of God. For those of you in the ministerial class, that is uh, 1343, 1342 in the Greek. Strong. Whatever is right and just of itself that conforms to the will of God. What did God say is important to Him? This is the fast that I want. This is what is important. Then at the baptism of Christ, he said, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. And then he went on to do what? What did Jesus go on to do? Fulfill the will of the God. This is the will of God. This is the fast that I want. Go and deliver my people. What did uh, uh, Jesus read when he started his ministry in Luke 4, 18 and 19? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This is it, to come and fulfill his fast, what he wants. What did Jesus do? I'll get you started, Jesus said. He goes all the way back here. <laughs> Hi, Ron. How you doing? I had to get back here to say hi. <laughs> he starts way back here as a man planted a seed. He took his shoes off. He started to walk. He started to grow in the Lord. Here am I, sent me. He found a treasure. And he kept going. And he found that pearl. And he started his walk up to God. As you get going, you see the hurt and pain of the world. And you remember this moment, because that's where he's taking you. When Jesus said, Follow me, where do you think he was taking you? 
was he going to take you right from, from that seed up to a, a blossoming flower where we were playing your little harp on the clouds floating around? No. He said, you follow me right through this book. And he said, and you're not going to like it too much. Actually, you're going to hate it. You know what, Peter? If you really love me, you're going to start walking where you don't want to walk. And he said, you're going to go there, and as you start bringing your treasure, you're going to want so bad to give it to me. But you can't. You've got work to do. And you want so bad to lay those crowns at my feet, but you can't because something has to happen yet. I'm going to sit on the throne as God. lights are going to get dim and dim. And they're going to be trying everything to get God's attention. To say, it's me. I professed your name. And it's going to be getting darker and darker as they're being pushed, pushed into hell. Just like Charles Spurgeon said in one of his sermons, many congregations are going to be going into hell. And their ministers are going to be there. And they're going to say, okay, minister, but their forked tongues are hissing tongues. Go ahead, minister, give us another one of your wonderful sermons. Tell us some more of your theology and doctrine. And the lights are going to be going out. But wait a minute. you got your treasure in front of you. You know what's to come. If you truly have Christ as your Lord and Savior, why do you know what's to come? Because if you're seeing what I'm telling you right now, your mind right now, the mind of Christ, the heart of God, is going to be telling you this. I'm going to leave my treasure right here, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to start doing what that rich man wanted to do when he was in the flames of hell. And he said, I was just send me back. We have that chance. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to plant a seed, and I'm going to start helping others to come along, and I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be weak. It's going to weaken me, and as it weakens me, I'm going to remember where I am. Jesus said, it's like people who have talents, remember? And never move from that. You're going to, okay, there's my treasure. It's the great white throne. Next, I understand, Lord. I'm going back. And you go back again. Now, there is no beginning and there is no end because that's the gospel. You understand? That's the anointing oil of David. That's continuous. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. You keep living for the kingdom of heaven because, people, what's next then? You know that the next divine moment is going to be what? You are going to drink this last cup with Christ in the kingdom of the Father. How uh. shall I like in the kingdom of <laughs> 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 Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our lives. Lord, help us to see all that in the spirit. Help us not to get sidetracked when we're right to Oh, Lord, we know you add all those things in our prayers. The way we study, that's okay. But, Lord, let us always stay on that straight and narrow line. Lord, that the fast you want is that to help those in need, to be there to the best of our ability, knowing we can never do it to perfection, but we can be a little part of it, never rejecting a human being, but always finding a proper place for that human being. Not to just 
kick somebody to the curb just because of what they've done, but instead to find a place for them where they could have a future. Lord, help us be there in all the ways that you have taught and chosen us to be. Not to be a rebellious, stiff-necked people, stuck in our own ways and our own attitudes, but Lord, to truly know what it means to be that man on his way to the throne. Let us study your word always to understand that now. Thank you for choosing us to be your children, for loving all of us just the way we are. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. The altar's